Here's a very simple fluid mechanics problem, which is looking at the idea of mass conservation. So this can be something that you will probably see as a first year engineering student in your fluid mechanics module. And again, if you'd like to see anything similar to this on the channel, let me know in the comments. So in this question, we're looking at basically a tank with a couple of inlets and outlets, and then the, um, the water level in the tank itself is also changing. So let's actually read the question first. So we know that uh, we have an open tank and the water is at 20 degrees Celsius, but we're not actually going to use this in any way, shape or form. And we're trying to find, we're, we're told that we have to find this first derivative of height with respect to time, which is also h dot of t, which is also the velocity of the free surface as it travels upwards when this tank is being um, filled. Actually, at this point, we shouldn't assume that the velocity of the free surface is going upwards because it will if the um, inlet, if the mass flow rate in is greater than the mass flow rate out. In that case, yes, the water level will increase. So we've got three different volumetric flow rates, so Q1, Q2, Q3, which are going in from different places or coming out from different places. And we're also given that the diameter of the tank is lowercase d. And we're actually told that the level h is constant. Well, actually, this is the second part of the question. In the first part of the question, we have to find what is this dh over dt, and then we're going to do this like mini case study when the level is constant and then we have to calculate this velocity v2 which is the velocity that the water is coming out from the outlet okay so let's actually do the question by drawing a control volume so i would draw the control volume like this and i'm gonna look at where the water is crossing the boundaries of the control volume right we have two inlets so those inlets are characterized by the volumetric flow rates q1 and q3 and then we have one outlet which is q2 and we also have that other outlet or inlet which is given by the height of the water which is actually which is either increasing or decreasing so we have to actually find out what's going on there so let's try to uh, do it this way let's assume that the water level is increasing so I'm going to assume the water level is increasing. So in other words, what that means is that the mass flow rate in is going to be greater than the mass flow rate out. Now, if this turns out to not be true, uh, we'll simply end up with a negative dh over dt, which is fine. It just means that the water level is decreasing. But uh, I'm going to make this assumption for now. And I'm going to say that the... Um, mass flow rate out through the free surface uh, plus the mass flow rate out through uh, outlet 2 is going to be equal to m1 plus m3. So in other words, I'm assuming that the level of the water in the water tank is increasing and that adds as a mass flow rate out. So mass conservation is going to work in this way. And then we have to arrange the terms and see what this first term is going to be. So we have M out uh, of the free surface. There's a lot of words, but we're going to simplify this in a bit. So this is M1 dot plus M3 dot minus M2 dot. So this is the mass flow rate uh, in at 1, which is actually going to be equal to the density times Q1. So it's the density times the volumetric flow rate, because remember, 
m dot is rho times q. So this is plus rho q3 and this is minus rho q2, like this. So mass out at the free surface, let's actually try to find what that is going to be. So uh, again, this is a mass flow rate, which means that it's equal to the density times the area times the velocity, let's call it u. So this is equal to rho times the area, which is pi over 4d squared, because again, the um, tank is actually a cylinder whose cross section is a circle. The circle has a diameter d, so the area is pi over 4d squared. And then u is essentially the velocity that the free surface has as it's traveling upwards. And that's also the rate of change of the height. So that's dh by dt. And that's essentially it. So I'm gonna, you know, take this and put it here and see what we are going to get. So we're gonna have essentially this. So rho, and then we have pi over 4d squared dh over dt equals, and then we can actually factorize a rho on the right hand side. So we have q1 plus q3 minus q2, and then we cancel out the rows. And that should give us dh over dt. So dh over dt is uh, 4 over pi d squared q1 plus q3 minus q2. And that's the first part of the question done. So we got an expression for the rate of change of height or for the speed of the free surface in terms of the other volumetric flow rates. So that's the answer. And then for the second part of the question, we have to take this a bit further. So we're told that if the water level is constant, so, uh, you know, if H is constant or if dh over dt is zero. So this is essentially the key for this part. So in part B, we have that h is constant. And this is equivalent to saying that dh over dt is equal to zero. Okay, so we have dh over dt being equal to zero. And then we have that v2 is going to be our uh, unknown. So we know what v1 is, we know what q3 is, and we have to find v2. So let's use this from part a to find v2. So the left hand side is going to be zero because the height is constant. So we have zero is equal to four over pi d squared times, and then we have q1 plus q3 minus q2. So if this is zero, it clearly means that this here is equal to zero, which we can write as q1 plus q3 minus q2 is equal to zero, which will result in q2 equals q1 plus q3. So we are asked about v2 specifically, not q2, which means that we have to write the volumetric flow rate in terms of the velocity. So, you know, volumetric flow rate uh, is just area times the speed. So we're going to use that here. So the area for the outlet is going to be based on the diameter, right? So we know the diameter is seven centimeters. So the area is going to be pi over 4 diameter squared multiplied by the velocity. So that's the velocity at the outlet, which is V2, which is what we're trying to find equals. And then let's see what the question tells us. We don't know Q1 straight away, but we know V1. So we're going to do the same thing as for V2. So this is pi over 4 D1 squared V1 and then plus. And I believe you were told Q3 straight away. So we know Q3 as this 0 0.01 meters cubed per second. So this is plus Q3. So if you want to find V2, you just rearrange and that's really all there is to it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do the maths. 
because they're just putting numbers into the calculator at this point. So this is 4 over pi d2 squared, and then this is pi over 4 d1 squared v1 plus q3. So v2 equals, and you can expand the bracket if you want, I'll try to do that. So this is uh, d1 over d2 squared v1 plus, and then we have 4 over pi d2 squared q3. And that's the final expression. You have numbers for everything. So uh, you know d1, you know d2, you know v1, uh, d2 again, you know, and then you know q3 as well. So you put numbers in here, you find v2, and that's basically going to be the speed of the water at the outlet such that the height of the water in the tank is going to be constant. And that's the end of the question.